the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1116. Good morning to you. Our conversation with Jerry Conley and the Hadley Authors brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people normally as the Jimmy Stewart Air Show approaches. And we're talking with our pilots who are coming in for the great show. Uh, they're at some remote location and coming in for the weekend. Jerry, good morning. You actually came here this morning in person. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, terrific. You flew in yesterday. I flew in yesterday. I tried to beat some of the early weather, and um, uh, it was a very eventful approach. You know, coming down through the mountains and looking at the beautiful th- the beautiful uh, sights, coming in all the trees and everything else, mm-hmm. and going, "Wow, that's a really bad place to have to land if it doesn't go well." <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one thing I have never done is approached Indiana from the air. Um, you know, Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, and and the various other cities that you fly into and out of. What is it like to uh, sort of round the bend and and come upon this valley? Uh, it's I've flown several shows over here. I flew with Latrobe a couple of years ago, and mm-hmm. and uh, just it's such a beautiful area. You know all the rolling hills, the green trees, and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't leave much options for you know <laughs> things if things uh, don't work out the way you plan. But uh, you know it's uh, it'd be a great sight all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Arthur's introduced Jerry for us. This is Jerry, Vlad Conley. That's, I don't know, I'm not sure how we came up with Vlad, but that's his uh, flight name. So he has, flies the uh, de Havilland uh, Vampire Jet. It's a jet, uh, Brit, uh, Britain's first single-engine jet. Mm-hmm. And Jerry, you'll have to give me the stats of it. I think it travels up to 568 mile an hour. Yes. And uh, it's actually made of balsa wood. No, I'm kidding about that. But there is wood in it. And it was from start to finish. 120 days when they designed to finish. So he'll tell you a little bit more about the history of it. But it, it's actually one of my favorite planes. I got to meet Jerry a couple years ago at ICAST, myself and John Miller. And we, I said, John, we got to get this guy here. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we have planned for the families and kids at the air, air show this weekend. And we're just excited to have our first jet actually at the air show. And Jerry's it. Yeah. And uh, he will put on a nice performance for us. So. Well, I imagine if the plane is called a vampire, well, Vlad is a certainly appropriate name, Jerry. Yeah, my um, military was actually thud. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't really work with, you know, we're in entertainment now, after all. So, um, trained circus carney. So, Vlad, you know, mm-hmm. Vlad the Impaler goes with the vampire. And the sure. kids, kids appreciate it a lot. Yeah. And when they come in tomorrow, we'll be, uh, or on Saturday when we have the show, we'll be hanging out at the gate. Uh, vampire teeth give them a little oh, yeah. preview of the airplane kids like that a lot yeah um of course i had my lawyers all be like you can't give up vampire teeth what if one of them chokes on it <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god you're really overthinking this a lot you know <laughs> so um no we have a good time it's um it's a great airplane to fly it's whole time you're in it you're mm-hmm. really you have that sense of world history because mm-hmm. it was the first single engine jet fighter ever built in the world uh back in 1943 and um you have a real sense of it when you're sitting in that balsa wood and plywood fuselage strapped to a burning fire on the end. Only the Brits would do something like that. They, (laughs) they also built the Audi, which explains a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, you know, some of the other cars, you know, electrical errors, but uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a great airplane and it's, it's a lot of fun for people to see. It's very unique in its twin tail and uh, be putting out a nice layer of smoke going really fast, making a lot of noise. This particular airplane, how did you come across it? How did you acquire it? Uh, Is it actually yours? Uh, it's, it's mine. I, I actually have three of them. Um, when the air show industry was going really strong, we were putting one airplane like in California, one in middle of the States, mm-hmm. um, like Ogden, Utah, then one on the East coast so that we could get to shows without too much wear and tear on the airplanes mm-hmm. and the fuel that we have to pay to do so. But now with COVID we're, we're mainly flying just the one airplane on the East coast Yeah, where, and we feel blessed to have the number of shows. We usually I fly 22 shows. Uh, we're down to six this year, but at least it's better than last year, which was one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This particular airplane, I'm sure you know the history of it. Um, uh, yeah, this was a Swiss-built airplane. Um, it was licensed to be built in India, uh, Switzerland, and England. And actually, until the F-16 was the largest production fighter ever built. Uh, there was 5,000 copies built throughout uh, 45, no, 48 different countries uh, flew the airplane. And um, <clears throat> there's only six left, and I've got three of the six that are left. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, Nathaniel said uh, 120 days from design to you're actually flying the airplane. Did they miss anything? Well, I'll, I'll <laughs> say it like this. It was a really interesting thing. In the middle of World War II, 
uh, they had built an airplane called the Gloucester Meteor, flew on two engines. The Germans had the ME-262, flew on two engines. The Air Ministry asked De Havilland if they could build an airplane that could fly on one jet engine. At the time, that would be considered incredible. And in 43, the Jeffrey De Havilland is on YouTube. Just look up De Havilland jet, you know, uh, test flight. Comes out as the Brits did in a suit and tie. You know, gets in the airplane, no headset on, and flies the airplane and outperformed everything they ever imagined. And it scared a lot of them that if we flew this during World War II and one got shot down, it could extend the war because the Germans would have the technology. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's funny, though, with the fuselage being made of balsa wood and plywood, as was the Mosquito fighter bomber, when you're up at altitude, you're doing like Mach 0.7, you know, flying up really high, the airplane talks to you like an old boat. <laughs> so you'll be flying along, you're this... <laughs> where the wood's moving around a little bit, but it's supposed to do that. Uh -huh. uh, that's the way it was designed. But it's still a little unnerving that uh, I figure at one point in time it's all going to peel away. I'll be like Wiley Coyote sitting there out in the wind, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. and, and wood, as durable as it is, isn't uh, a forever material. Is well, there... actually, that's why the, the, the airplane is so good, the way it was designed, is the Brits realized that when the Mosquito fighter bomber would fly over and pick up all the ground flak and bullets, mm -hmm. their pilots lived. Because if you shoot, you know, two inches of balsa wood and plywood, uh, a round will stick into the wood like a 22 into a phone book, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas a B-24, B-25, it'd go through that airplane, the pilots, the co-pilot, out and hit the mm -hmm. other airplane. Because it's like shooting a 22 into a, a beer can. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it was a much safer airplane to fly, and wood has no fatigue index. So theoretically, that airplane will last forever yeah. because it, it bends and moves as long as you keep it dry and we do a, do a termite mm. uh, service every year to make sure there's nothing you know corroding in the wood. But outside of that, it's a forever airplane. Jerry Conley is our guest along with the Nathaniel Arthur's, the Jimmy Stewart air show is coming up this weekend. Uh, Nathaniel, maybe you got to tell people how to get tickets to this. Yes. Uh, you can get tickets online at the Jimmy Stewart airport.com. You get them at our local uh, shops here, the 700 shop Luxembourg's Mark Arbuckle, Nissan, all the Delaney dealerships, the Indiana County tourist bureau, uh, Indiana County Airport, Star Chevrolet in uh, on Route 30 in Greensburg, and also the 700 shop down in Catanning. So, mm -hmm. again, it's the July 10th, 11th this weekend. And, uh, again, we couldn't have done this air show without the help of the Indiana County Center for Economic Operations Affiliates and all of our sponsors and all of our volunteers. We are so excited because we are coming. Uh, we are pumped up for this air show. This will be the best air show that we ever had. So come on out and support our local air show, our community event, and come out early. Uh, we have the high school cheerleaders doing breakfast both days, 7 a.m. to 10.30. All proceeds go to them for new uniforms, and also they need new mats. So let's come out as a community and support our cheerleaders as well. Absolutely. Jerry, this particular airplane, what are some of the comments people tell you at, at these shows? You've, you've done them so many, and you've, oh. you've done it in this plane. And, and, and I know that they look at that plane, and they say, I never saw anything like that before. Yeah, you, you get some really interesting comments from people that have uh, flown in a lot of areas where people really don't spend a lot of time around airplanes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, then, and they're not familiar with jet aircraft. I've had people say, like, where's the propeller? And, you know, um, uh, some people are like, you know, I've seen that plane fly in Vietnam. When I was in Vietnam, I'm like, no, it didn't fly in Vietnam. Yes, it did. I was there. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yes, it did. <laughs> have a great day. It's it's just various things as an air show pilot. You uh, you learn to appreciate people and their and their excitement mm -hmm. about aviation. And I love being a part of that, especially younger kids. And if I can just tell you a really quick story, I don't know how sure. much time we have. Yeah. Um, the reason I really do this is my greatest joy is the flying portion. But um, a lawyer that I had years and years ago with a group with my daughter, uh, his dad pushed him to be a lawyer like him. <clears throat> When he was 16, I took him for a flight in one of the fighters and flew him around, gave him like a real combat mission feel. Well, I'm flying the Corpus Christi Naval Air Show two and a half years ago, and this young-looking Marine lieutenant comes up to me, and he says, how are you, sir? And gives me a salute, and I salute him back, and he says, uh, by the way, I'm Noah. And I looked at him, I'm like, Noah? He goes, <laughs> yeah. When I finished law school, I, I hated being a lawyer. I remembered that flight you took me on. I joined the Marine Corps. I'm, a, I'm now in fighter training. I'm going to fly F-18s. Wow. And he said, you changed my entire life. And that's why I do this. Because you know what? There's, there's so many kids 
that need inspiration to realize that there's a big life out there. They can take anything they want to do. Mm-hmm. And I just want to be a part of that. Where are you from? Where do you, where do, where's your base? Well, I grew up in Beaver, Ohio, where we talk like this, <laughs> um, or as I said, we saw Ohio, A-H-I-A. Mm-hmm. Um, and you always tell a true Ohioan because, you know, they're talking about down by the creek. In and out in the holler. Yeah, we do and, that here too. Okay, you, you got a crick the holler here <laughs> yeah. too. So I now live in Louisiana. Where they talk, they don't talk like this. Yeah, you know, they talk like this. You come down to the mall. Yeah, you want to go with us? And I do that. My family goes, "Don't do that." <laughs> okay. So and so does everybody in Louisiana. Everybody in Louisiana. Yeah. So uh, some of them are a little flatter than others, but uh, they say things backwards because they're French. And mm-hmm. you know, you want to go to the mall? No. And I'm like, "Are you asking me? Are you telling me you don't want to? You know, I, I don't understand." So. Um, it's an interesting place to live, wonderful food, um, and it's hot. So now I feel like I'm at home. Yeah. Yeah. You need to wear a jacket up here. Huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's only, only 85 today here. And, and yeah, yeah, it was a little warm yesterday, a little <laughs> toasty, a little humid. Yeah. Does it get that way up in the airplane? Um, my cockpit temperature, if, if it's, if it's a hundred on the ground, mm-hmm. like on the ramp, uh, when I shut the cockpit, because it becomes like a fishbowl, uh, usually it hits about a hundred and 25 to 140. Yeah. Yeah. So when you get out, you're soaked. I mean, it's, it's a workout. And 15 minutes of flying, pulling four to six G is, is tough anyway. Mm-hmm. So the older you get, the harder it is. But, um, you know, yeah, you're you're exhausted by the time it's over with. Yeah. And as the owner of the plane, uh, the maintenance costs uh, must be uh, something that uh, pretty daunting, huh? Well, it's it's um, it's a pretty easy to maintain airplane. It's, it's mainly getting the parts. Um. But when I do the air shows, you know, I'm the chief cook and bottle washer. It's always funny because I remember my Air Force days, you know, they uh, cruise and pull planes for it. The pilot comes out with a, uh, a signed list, uh-huh. you know, signs for the airplane, gets in and flies the airplane away. Mm-hmm. He doesn't realize there's been like eight hours of maintenance beforehand. Well, I fuel it, I maintain it, I pack it, I wash it, I wax it, and I fly it. So um, it it's it's a long day. Yeah. Yeah, I would guess. It's it's more than full time, and it? it's more than full time. <laughs> but it's a passion. He's Jerry Conley. You're gonna see him at the Jimmy Stewart Air Show this weekend. Nathaniel Arthur's, of course, uh, we're really looking forward to this. Oh, we're excited. It's we're coming pumped. up. It's coming up and it's coming up really, really quickly. Twenty five minutes after nine o'clock. It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS one oh one point one FM and AM eleven sixty. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Todd. You. Thank you, Renda, for having us. Appreciate it. Boomer is next. CBS Sports Minutes brought to you by S and T Bank. Hi, I'm Steve Dranak, president of the Western Pennsylvania market for s and Bank. Bright future ahead? Let's plan on it together. From personalized advice to individualized solutions, we'll work together to ensure that your financial future is a bright one. Talk options with your banker today. Stop by and visit us at one of our local offices, online at stbank.com, or call us at 800-325-2265. s and Bank, member FDIC. This is Boomer Esiason with the CBS Sports Minute. Sponsored by Lexicon, your holistic provider of practice management software and legal support services. Today's birthday shout